people think about this very this deep past, right, the Bronze Age, you know, it is a long way away, and certainly life was very different then. Um, but one one of the c concepts people have about prehistory is that people went around looking really bedraggled, poor haircuts, dodgy clothes, rough-looking kit, and I think that. You know, this is understandable in many ways because some of the sorts of finds we all have, so for example, the textiles, when, when they come up out of the ground, they look like this. You know, they, these are, are black due to the process of decay. They're fragments because not the whole thing has preserved. And so they can look, uh, they don't look very appealing. They do look like rags at this point. But examining these and looking at the different technologies, the materials, we can understand them in a different way. And so it's black because of the preservation processes, but if we look at the materials um, of uh, this, this textile, this was made from uh, fine plant fibers, it would have been woven, it would have had um, maybe a light, maybe a, a creamy color, slightly golden gray color, um, as a as a linen fabric, and so so we can start to sort of visualize them in a different way. Um, but on top of that, when we look at the technology of these um, of these textiles in this case, and we understand that people are making fine fabrics in the bron Bronze Age, they're not just rough and ready. And, and there's a few ways we can understand that. First of all, when we look at, um, with uh, low-level microscopy on um, a textile like this, we see that the, the yarns have been very evenly produced. They're not, um, they haven't got bumps in them that a novice would make if, you, if you're having difficulty in um, twisting your, your threads into yarns. Um, so they've got very even yarns. Uh, and then they're woven, they're woven in a very consistent manner. So people, they're practiced experience. So we can understand about the technology, a level of quality there in the production, that these are people who were very well practiced in what they were doing. When we look at a, a textile like this as an archeologist, one of the ways that we compare textiles one with another and, and the type of textiles it was, was to, is to count the number of threads in a centimeter of weaving. And this is called the, the thread count. And some of these textiles, I think, for example, this one, I think it has um, around 26 threads per centimeter of weaving. So this is a really, this is a nice, fine textile. If we think about our tea towels at home, depending on the quality of your tea towel, of course, this might have around 11 to 16 threads per centimeter. Um, whereas, you know, this we're talking, the, as we're talking of this would say around 26 threads per centimeter. I think there are lots more yarns packed into a small amount of space and the yarns are finer as well. And so we've got a finer cloth here and this is comparable to maybe some of the summer clothing that we have. It's not as fine as our, as a industrially produced shirt that we might be used to having even something like my own. You know, this has been produced in another way, but for these linen fabrics, um, these are very fine qualities of fabric and comparable to some of the, the finest um, textiles that are being produced at the time. The, the woven textiles would have been woven on a loom. And when we're talking about a loom, um, most likely uh, uh, some kind of standing loom. And the loom is basically a frame that holds some of the yarns in tension, and we call those the warp. Um, usually those are the threads that are going down, held by maybe a, um, by being attached to um, another beam or weights, and that holds one set of threads in tension. And then the other set of threads is what's woven in and out in each row, so that's the action. And that's, that's an active um, thread, so putting the shuttle um, back and forth to weave the textile.